you do your kick drum?
on the screen. Always on the screen. Just I figured after I did the solo thing, I would do a Meat Puppets thing, and Pete Anderson, you know, and I had talked about it, you know, because it's like that. That's what the electric thing would be. I did Eyes Adrift because those guys didn't want it to be Meat Puppets, pretty much. I, you know, I never really breached that subject. It just wasn't really. I was just another band, but uh, that if if it's going to be electric, I just it wouldn't. I wouldn't. Doesn't seem like you would want to make it a solo album, you know. I don't know. I just hadn't hadn't. Uh, uh, any more to do with the solo stuff, you know, I s toured it out and w decided to make a record and then he was finished with uh, jail and, and uh, you know, rehabilitated, so uh, I called him up and see if he wanted to do it. He was game, you know, Bostrom wasn't game, but that's pretty much what transpired, you know, we, uh, it was just the, the natural moving back to another electric album, you know, wanting to do an electric album and, uh, you know, more, habit. More, more than transpired. Kind of been at least from from the outside, it's been thriving. It's, it's the second record in. The reviews are really great. There's been a ton of gigs, and it seems like it's really, really working again for the Meat Puppets. Well, you know, it's it's just yeah. I I always looked at it as like downtime is time down between any two gigs. So you know, it, it really has the music has no memory. You know, you have your habits, but realistically, you're progressing every night so the downtime is just like you know might as well be downtime for the your family dog or whatever nobody you know the, in the musician's mind you don't really notice it you might gain some life experience in between there but yeah you know it's um it's we, we, it, that's why it's you, you know I, I i i didn't think about it not being meat puppets it's just because it's it's it kind of has its own life that way, you know, and, it, and um, you know, we'll see if it, I mean, it's, uh, it's just work, it's <laughs> really, it's like, it's, it seems like that, it seems like when you get into it, it's just what you do. Mm -hmm. For you, Chris, to be sitting here with a new Me Puppets record, you know, does it feel like progression to you, does it feel like a new chapter, what, what was it like for you to have a new record that's getting me out of the gate, some of the best reviews you guys ever um, have had? You know, it's, 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 I mean, it's beyond a progression. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a rebirth, absolutely and entirely. For me personally, and entirely and completely. Yeah, you should talk to him because I'm really cynical and jaded, and I have a memory about that long, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's wonderful, you know. One of the, you know, I mean, it was just utterly great to have Kurt call me, you know, to manage to get to the point in my life that he would deign to call me at all, you know, and then to actually call me. To want to play again, it's just like, hey, got that right, you know, and and I'm really grateful, you know, that I gave that to myself and that the people that you know helped me to get to that did and allowed me to get to that, you know, and th that I got to that point. And then then when we started playing again, it was just like, yeehaw, man, this again, jeez Louise, you know. So and um, it's cool, man. It's really cool. And to have you in the middle of all that, and you know, and I, I heard some of the story about how these guys found you and how impressed they were with your with your skills and. Has it been an immediate kind of family thing for you guys? Or? Well, it was kind of gradual, and it just <laughs> no, it felt pretty natural because I mean I kind of had a chance to be around them. I was working with Joseph Coltis on a, uh, he did, was their photographer for a long time, and I came into it working with him, doing uh, helping him with audio. So I kind of got a chance to be around them a little bit before playing with them. So it was kind of got you, know, you kind of got some know, calluses. Yeah. Got to know him a little bit, and then it just kind of like worked in, and it just felt it just felt natural. I've been a fan for so many years. I, I mean, it, it it literally happened like you know we were in the studio making "Rise to Your Knees," and Kurt was doing the drumming, and like the second day in the studio, 
Because like, let, let, let me check out that drum kit. And he opens up his, his little audio bag, you know, he was doing audio, and, and he had drumsticks in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. you play drums? It was a sneak attack a little bit, but, you know, it was really no intention to try to be in the band or anything like that, more just, you know, to help out something that I've, that I've loved for a long time. And then, you know, <laughs> I was like, you know, it just came, well, you know, it just kind of came out of that. And uh, then it was really easy to, to pick up on some stuff because, you know, I already was familiar with a lot of it and was able to kind of just get right into it. But uh, th this new record is really kind of, you know, for me, going out and, and, and playing new stuff really makes me feel like a part, you know, a part of it now. Mm -hmm. you know, I love playing the old stuff. But there's no turning back. Just the record down. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That was discreet, wasn't it? <laughs> What's that? God, this you missed my ah, my clownish. This is the first time I've seen the I was thrown out. I, 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 I was yeah. asked to leave. Said, Boy, that came out pretty. Said, you will but what? You'll never see this place again. You'll never see this again. You know, I mean, pride has never really been that big of a part of the environment for me, honestly. You know, it just isn't. I mean, it's not, you know, pride. I don't know. I don't think I could have been become the. You know, I don't think I I'm starting to have to somewhere. micromanage myself. What's going on, man? I did have some sort of a disconnect between Bill those Cody, how are you? You know, if I didn't look at myself in a particular way, you know, so that it just it pride is just seems, it, you know, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, but I mean, I love I love doing work. Hey, you know. You know and, and I love seeing the final, the finished product. You, you know, just have to work go, around Ted's neat, vacation you know? stuff. He's Especially up when it comes out in July, too. You try to do something and it's all this stuff. Hey, you know, it's all good for me. I don't have any compunction. I have no compunction. But that's, that's the, yeah, uh, that's definitely a part of it. You know, when you're trying to get something done, you know, you're trying to make art, you know, you're trying to work the process. How do you actually get work done? You know, and, uh, no, it's, it's, it's really neat. And beyond that, I mean, it's just we amazing for me to actually have my brother back in my life. Have the Mew Puppets back? Unbelievable. You know, because like we were saying when we were talking to Kurt, when you, I'm you, game for stuff snow. as long as I can make it work. You know, yeah, July's yeah, got some, some stuff. Like August is totally fucking and free. And maybe it was. Um, was it August? But I'm saying you're talking about the summer. Yeah, August is free. and very much not in the picture. Yeah, because we'll be out. We're out like... Oh man, you just, don't, you just don't want to know, and I don't want to hear it. <coughs> um, but you know, somewhere in the next <laughs> month, in <laughs> June, that you know, <laughs> early June. As somebody who loves the meat puppets, you know, personally, and who you know really digs Kurt as an artist, you know, I'm very lie, you know, and, and, and who loves to play with him. I mean, it's just something really, really, really fun there, you know. And then also just what I, what he and I, I don't know, it's just weird what he and I get into together, you know, and the and then little Teddy. Little Teddy pounding on the things behind yeah. us. So. Is, there, is, there how much, is there still fun? Because I remember so many Me Puppets gigs and so many interviews you guys did where it was there's so much just laughter and, and whimsy and, and just craziness. Is that craziness element still part of a Me Puppets world and, and fantasy? And it shows up on the record, it shows up in the songs I know, it shows up in your writing. But uh, where's that, where that fantasy world for the, for the Me Puppets? I think that was always in the eyes of the audience. I, I, I always viewed this as a high, high priced trip into alienation and depression. Not <laughs> 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 you? Uh, I, uh, what was the question? Now, thank God beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I mean, if you actually had to read the personal thoughts of some of these fuckheads, you know, and like have that stand as, as the entertainment value, you'd, you'd melt your fucking eyeballs. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about these guys. I'm just talking about entertainers in general. Right. I don't think they should joke around at all. Now, see, you may not know that much about entertainment living here in. LA and Hollywood and that stuff, but yeah, out where we're from in Texas, that's the entertainment capital. Right. And uh, no, I'm, I, no, I'm from Phoenix, the entertainment capital. Yeah, Let's they, talk about the hub. you know, they have vaudeville in 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 New York City. So Ted's <laughs> yeah. Ted's used to it, and and but Oregon you guys, you know, you Oregon gotta. Gander. That's why we tour is to educate people on what show business is really about, and it, it's 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 really you know a bunch of you know painted turkeys. But when you're but, out there. When you're out there strutting your feathers, as it were, does it feel the same as it did 
15, 20 years ago, the same went in between the two of you. It's still, it's, it's yeah, music is is always growing that way. It had, you know, if you if you're lucky, you can, you know, just kind of let it go and you know get a, a habit of letting it do that, and then it'll it'll just do it. And, and on a good day, you know, to, for me, like you know, last couple of days in practice, I wasn't feeling it, and I I I kind of you know traced the, the whole thing down to I didn't I wasn't digging the guitar, which I really was trying hard to dig. Because I love it, but it wasn't working in this cir circumstance right now, and just dicing out some stuff and figured out, okay, this is going to work. This is making me happy, and then it kind of seems like I'm making some progress. But it's always been that way, and you know, if it's, I mean, once you get to the stage, it seems like that's the the, the general joy of it. I mean, is that it's, there's really, it's just music, so it's th there's not, you know, there's not much to hold up at that point. We never figured out an act. And you know, we are douchebags, kind of from you know the you know it, it, the basic nature is just like that. The punk rock it was an excuse to get involved in music, but we're, we were never that serious about it. Mm -hmm. And like pitching our stuff is like what we wound up doing because n we didn't get other jobs and hold them down and you know make real money. So um, you know, and I. You know, no matter what I do, I figure the world owes me a living, so. <laughs> well, it got to the point, that, uh, I would hope it got to the point, you know, especially it helps to have a great new record because people are digging, forgetting everything else. But it got to the point where it's kind of that legendary status gets thrown on you. Is that something you just push aside or you say, all right, great, but then where's, where's, the, where's, what, where's what I'm... That le legendary status like that should inspire massive guilt in people who get close to me, and they should start showering me with the the means to provide for myself extravagantly. There you go. We'll, we'll put that on TV and make it work for you. We got it now. So I, was talk, I was talking to Chris about just, you guys just talk about just how proud you are of this record and the song skirt because, you know, this stuff kind of spewed forth from you in so many ways. Is this, is this, when you're writing songs like this at this point in your career that people are saying some of the best stuff we've helped have ever done, what does that mean to you as an artist? That it's worthwhile to strive to get that 123% out of yourself. And, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get him, Tiger. <laughs> Go get him. That's what it is. Here's I push myself. Go He's a real go getter. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm conscious of what I've done, and I try not to repeat it, you know, to a degree. And I'm just, I, it's nice, you know, to be, to, to be able to figure songs out at this point because I've the, a lot of the times I feel pretty burnt out on it I feel like I don't you know have anything and then I remember oh, I went through huge periods of time all all through my songwriting career where I felt like I had kind of writer's block and then I realized oh this stuff is kind of cyclical I'll just go through pa parts of where I, I feel like writing all of a sudden or stuff will just pop up and um, honestly if I try to do stuff it has never really worked you know I've like had pitch songs to say movies or whatever. Now people in movies will use stuff, but if I wrote just for stuff, it doesn't really work. It's h hard for me to sit down and, and make myself right. But if something's worth it, uh, I just get it in my head. Like uh, to, today I had one of those songs from Dookie in my head, that paranoid song, you know, and I just, and it's like, it's like that, you know, I just, it's one of your own songs, but it gets in your head like that to where, you know, so I don't have to work on it. Conversely, you know, be, because it's like it, it'll just get stuck in my head. So the good stuff, you know, like, uh, and I've heard other people say it too. I heard Keith Richards say it before. It's like I don't, you know, you know, it doesn't really have to record it or run straight to the tape recorder and put it down or write the words down or this kind of thing. Because if it's worth the crap, you're probably going to remember it. Mm -hmm. Is there an elusive song though you remember from ten years ago? Something that you wish you had written down? I have dreams about stuff where you know it's like. I feel like I'm getting this really cool sound out of the guitar or whatever. Or to, well, this is this song, and I have I've actually dreamt songs before and then wrote them afterwards. You know, I can go, ah, oh, I dreamed that song last night. This is cool, and I, it was like, it's like you know, it was something that was already. So yeah, it's that that's actually happened before, which is kind of cool. What's the most surprising thing about being close with these guys after? Spending so much time is the most surprising thing about being, being a meat puppet, uh, close to the watching them. Uh, <laughs> this is the most surprising. They're made out of like uh, 
cable ties and duct tape and wire. <laughs> the, the sewn together title, does that have any significance other than something cool? And yeah, that's it, right? Now, you know, I'd like, I think it started out as being, it, it, it's, it's all so together or something. I don't know, the way it started out in my head. And then, um, you know, it's just uh, what I settled on singing, really. It's just stuff, once again, there that's that, that, it's, somebody had a description for it the other day I saw on TV that was really pretty appropriate, like what you're chasing, that's chasing the dragon kind of thing, you know, that's, you know, not, it <clears throat> doesn't really mean anything, and it's kind of beyond that, beyond meaning and emotion and all that stuff. Talk about just, just this kind of last thing, just the fan base now. You have new fans, there's kids out there, parents bringing their little kids to come see what the new puppets are all about that they've heard about them. I remember your kids at shows years ago, and just to have just this wide range of people getting turned on to music now for the first time with the new music, I may not have heard of, you know, on their son or way or something like that. What's it like now seeing kids come to the shows and discover the new puppets for the first time? What does that mean to you guys as a band? That's ah, cool, you know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we ever paid that much atten attention to us coming to the shows at all, really. You know, I know I don't. Um, but I mean, if you know, if there's anybody there at all, good for them. Yeah, I think it's cool. I like it because they uh, we can um, bring some of the the heartlessness of our approach into their wonderful lives. Into their innocent. Yeah, into the. Fresh. <laughs> No, we, Go like you know, I figure that's, that's part of the, part of what, what heritage is all about, you know, is that they, they may not have been, ha had the same uh, cultural venues as things change even subtly, you know, to experience, uh, you know, the, the kind of music that'll make you want to, you know, just sit there and, and have snot run out of your mouth into a bucket, you know, just like music to drool into a bucket to, and God, and and uh, and you know, you need to show them, you know. It's like and they and as there's always been a new crop as they're able to get to bars and where live, you know, rock music is played, that kind of thing. Uh, get beyond the stuff that's whatever Disney Channel has raised them for 20 years now or more, and that's a natural progression. And then get into the teen rock bands, which are kind of cool, whatever. And and then they go, go and and buy their Velvet Underground's albums and whatever the you know the 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 heritage stuff is. And you know, and if you have the opportunity live, it's fun to show them. You know, this is how how. You know, we thrived when we were your age, and we and it still works, yeah. kind of. Yeah. And I mean, we got it off of somebody else. You know, definitely parts of it. You know, just the whole. It's not yeah, that was we, my impression. We didn't, in, you know, we didn't invent guitars. That's for sure. You know, and, uh, and it's just neat. It definitely neat, though. You know. Mm -hmm. Fun. Just, just seeing you guys, because I've seen you guys play so many times. There were some crazy shows. I saw you guys falling over in pajamas and blood, and I remember all kinds of. Odd things up there on stage. You're scaring. <laughs> you're scaring Ted. <laughs> but just, just what's what's it like now on the road with you guys? You just put the words. Pajamas um, and blood was a Bob what, Dylan what song. Have you what do you do on the road now to, to, to keep it to keep it going? Play the shows. Just that's what we always did. The extracurricular stuff is a, a myth in a lot of ways, and stuff that I've always avoided. I'm I'm not way into the frat party, and you know the whole. Thing. I have friends that come to shows. That keeps me going. It's always nice to see people from town to town that you know and permitted us to stay more in touch than you do with, you know, if you're just sitting around in one town. People I went to high school with, whatever. Um, but it's always been the same. There's TV in every hotel room, you know. Now I, I mean, I'm kept in, in touch or I'm kept in constant uh, surveillance with this. Oh God. You know, it's crazy. It's just like, if I answer it, that's, po that's step one of the triangulation that occurs on a daily basis. <laughs> so. I'm going to let you guys go. Real, real pleasure. It's good seeing you, Adam.